Good morning guys, welcome back to Hummingbird Acres. I am so excited to show you guys our first garden tour of the 2023 year. Um, you guys are gonna have to excuse my voice, I am getting over a cold, but I am super excited to show you guys everything that we are growing in our backyard garden on our homestead. This is our main garden area, ignore the can. One of the kids must have been helping yesterday. So this is our main garden area. It is eight beds, well actually 10 beds, but this was our, not our original garden, but this is where we grow the most of our food and where we keep all of our cut flowers. So we're gonna start over here. Um, we have some yarrow right here. We grow yarrow for two reasons. We grow it as a cut flower and we also grow it for the pollinators. I am getting ready to release a brand new ebook all about pollinators and how to attract butterflies to your backyard. I will leave a link below for you guys if you want to check that out. But yarrow is great for cut flowers and great for pollinators. This bed right here, we are not growing actually in the bed. We, um, it was just too hard to get to last year with the weeds and all of that. So what we did is we took all the soil out of it and we put landscaping mesh in the bottom of it. And then this bed has all of what Jamie likes to call our ornamentals. So we have our, and these are the trees that I got from the Arbor Day Foundation. Um, the dogwoods are not doing well. And the one in the back is a sugar maple. And I think that one is doing okay, but we'll have to give it a couple more weeks to see. I did write them about the dogwoods and I'm still waiting for them to get back to me. But we have forsythia in here. We have mock orange in here. Um, we have some bee balm in here. I believe we also have cat mint. We have two different types of roses, uh, chestnuts, Chinese chestnuts, weeping cherry. Um, this one right here is a red bud. We have a couple red buds in here. And we also have a Dawn Redwood and also some more cone flowers. So this bed really is just all of the pollinator and kind of our ornamental plants. All right, if we keep going this way, we have two raspberry bushes. I believe these are the red raspberries, but I'm not, I'd have to wait until they bloom. The toddler took the tags out, so I don't know what is what. This bed here is all of our, not all of our fruits, but this is more of our orchard and fruits. So blueberry bushes, there's a raspberry, a fig. This tall one here also came from the Arbor Day Foundation. And this is our pineapple pear. So I'm really excited to see how that one turns out. We also have some other pear trees that I started from seed in here a couple years ago. So those look awesome. We have a grapevine right here. And we have, this is a black walnut is what is right there. And then more apple and more blueberry in there. And then these are the four apple trees that Jamie grafted at Mountain Runs grafting class in the spring. They all were doing great. And then it looks like this one back here, the rootstock maybe died on it. So this one did not do very well, but we're still happy with three out of four. We think that that's a pretty good ratio, especially for his first time ever grafting. Um, down here we have more fruit trees. We have a plum, two cherries, and oh my gosh, look at that. We have cherries. I am so excited. Yay, they are tiny, that is okay but we have a cherry. Yay, so excited. Um, and then we have another plum tree right here. And then this bed, I'm gonna back up so you guys can see it. This bed here is our tomato bed. We are not growing as many tomatoes this year as we have in the past, just because of our schedules and not really having time to take care of them. But this is our tomato bed and then we have our worm composter right here that we need to get started again. And then over the weekend, I went with my godmother to a nursery and we got two more fig trees. These were actually really, really reasonably priced. I think they were like $9 each. So we were very excited about that considering fig trees 
online have been running like 60 to a hundred dollars. So that was a great deal. Um, going this way, apple, peach, two more apples, a blueberry, irises from the property and our garlic. This is, we, this is by far the best garlic harvest we have had. Um, or we will have, it just is amazing. And it looks like it needs to be weeded again. So that will be on the list here soon. But Jamie has already pulled a couple of these and they look awesome. So we are super excited about that. Um, going down this bed, we have some more irises. These are from, the irises are from our property in Virginia. And then we have an oak tree right here that we grew from acorn. I am always trying to grow our pollinator beds, especially because we are starting a new one in Virginia. So this is the milkweed for our new pollinator bed. I'm, my goal is to keep it in these cups for at least a year and then we'll transplant it later on, but we will see how that goes. Um, peach tree, apple tree. These don't have, these are the only two that don't have fruit on them but that's okay, we're not too worried. And the size is still kind of small, so it's not that big of a deal. It's gonna go this way. Let's start on this side. So this bed here has two rows of carrots, a row of onions, and then we have butternut squash that is growing up this side of the trellis. And then on the opposite side, we have spaghetti squash and then this whole bed is peppers, sweet peppers and hot peppers. And at the end of this bed is more raspberries. This bed here is our summer squash and we are gonna grow them up tea posts, which is why all these tea posts are in here. And we'll do a video on that when they get big enough to start tying to the tea post. They're not quite there yet. So they're kind of just all hanging out. And then we grew some eggplant. This is, I think, two different varieties of eggplant. I'd have to ask Jamie, he planted these, but eggplant, more raspberries. Um, this bed here, we're actually growing our dahlias in an appropriate bed this year and have appropriate support for it. So this side is the dahlias and we have the support netting on there. If you wanna see how we did that, I'll link a video below for you. So dahlias with our support netting is on this side. And then these are our red potatoes. These have taken off. This is just amazing. We're so excited about these. These have taken off. And then this is our first ever fruit tree that we got for our homestead. It is blueberries. And you can see if, as long as the kids don't get it, and as long as the animals don't get it, we should have a great harvest of blueberries this year. And then that one's the first, and then this is the second one we got. And this one is doing pretty well. So we should get a good crop of blueberries. Um, to my two lilac bushes, I have another one somewhere, but those are my two that I got this year. And then I did cut down on the number of cut flowers we're growing just because I went back to work and just having the time. So this is our zinnia bed and Henley helped me with the support. We still do have, I think it's on the other side. Yeah, you guys can see it right there. We still do have a couple holes that didn't germinate. So we're gonna replant those here soon so that the whole bed is full. Uh, over here on this side is our herb tower. So we have lavender, parsley, oregano, and thyme. I think that's in the wrong order, but that's what is in the herb tower. That had a little bit of shock. You can see like right here when we first planted it, but it's coming back great. And I'm gonna cut here soon so that we can start drying those. But super excited about that. Um, this is another red bud tree. Our plan with the red buds, they are nitrogen fixers and we will use them in the orchard, but they are also really, really pretty trees in the spring. So what we wanna do is line our driveway in Virginia with red buds, which is why we have so many of them here. And we actually have a few more in Virginia too. So that is why we have so many red buds. Um, this is the grapevine from Aldi that took off. That was awesome. 
And then this bed here is basil. It's lemon basil, Persian crust, and then a cinnamon basil. So this is all my greens for cut flowers. And I'm kind of afraid to see why that was poking up like that. There's gotta be something growing that shouldn't be. We'll see how that does. But this bed is doing pretty well. And then there's mint down there again. We grow mint in a pot because it does go crazy, but um, it's just taken a little time to come back, which I'm fine with because it can be overwhelming and invasive. So this is our main garden. I'll take you guys over to kind of like our staging area and then I'll show you our last garden bed. So this is our patio and we used to grow a lot on this patio. You might remember we had the planter boxes. There was three of them. Um, what happened is this redwood tree that's right here got really big and started to shade this to the point where we can't grow anything. So this is kind of becoming like my staging area for a lot of things. So this is a maple that we've had for years, um, an oak, some rosemary back there. All of my peonies are over here, um, my clematis. We did these pollinator towers this year. And I know like this doesn't look too hot on the top, like this doesn't look too hot, but it is coming back. Like some of it is coming back, which is why we're just leaving it. Um, I might transplant more if it does really, really bad, but that's um, that tower. And then over the weekend, I told Jamie I was not potting up anything else. I wasn't doing any more pots. And in less than an hour, I did four yuccas, five black eyed Susans, and two more red bud trees. <laughs> so I didn't really stick to my word on that, but all of this will go with us. I know it doesn't look too good right now, but it is just the shock from transplanting it. They they were in areas where we don't want them and where we don't grow anymore, so I kind of ripped them out. Um, this is another pollinator tower. This one looks amazing. This one I also started this year, but it had more established plants when I put it in. So sedum, salvia, more sedum, and I forget what this one is called. I think it starts with an L. We have it in a lot of places, but that loving that pollinator tower, butterfly bush, uh, coneflower. This is looking, this looks kind of sad, but it is the first bloom and it's the first year in this pot. So I'm loving the way that is looking right now. And then I have a peony and then another white oak there. So like I said, this has kind of become our staging area for all things that we are growing and things that might need just a little bit of shade. This year we are growing our green beans in this long bed here next to our pool. Uh, last year we grew tomatoes in it as well as the year before, but this year we decided to change it up and we're gonna grow some green beans. We are doing bush beans kind of a low maintenance, um, maybe one, two harvest. We might succession plant these, we'll just have to see. But this whole bed here, I gotta replant some spots, but this whole bed is our green bean bed. And then we do have a parsley that made it through the winter right there that um, I will cut off and dry as well. And then the last thing that we updated or kind of added to this year is I got some more strawberries and we filled in this green stock planter with some more strawberries. Uh, the kids, there was a lot of actually red strawberries on here the other day and it looks like the kids kind of came out here and took them. So I don't know if this is going to stay here. It might have to go back into the pool area so the kids don't attack it all the time. But loving the green stock strawberry planter. I'll leave a link for that below if you guys want one for your homestead. All right guys, there you have it. There is the first tour of our garden, our 2023 garden. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us at the farmhouse today. And please like this video and subscribe so you can see more of our garden and homestead here in Maryland. And you can see the big homestead project we are taking on in Virginia. 
We will talk to you guys later. Have a great day.